the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered together to plan Jesus' death. They bound him and they led him away and they handed him over to Pilate, the Roman governor. When Judas, the one who had betrayed Jesus, heard that he had been condemned to death, he was seized with remorse. And he brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. And he said to them, I have sinned. I have brought about the death of an innocent man. But the chief priests and the elders said, what is that to us? That is your concern. And Judas threw the money onto the temple floor and he left. And he went out and he hanged himself. The chief priests and the elders gathered up the money. It's not lawful to put it into the temple treasury. It is blood money. So they decided to use it to buy a potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. And that is why, to this day, that place is called the Field of Blood. And thus was fulfilled the word spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. See, they have taken 30 pieces of silver, the price set on a man's head, amongst those Israelites. And they have used it to buy a potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Jesus was brought before Pilate. And Pilate said to him, So, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, Those are your words. The chief priests and the elders brought charges against him, but Jesus did not respond. Pilate said, do you not hear all the evidence they are bringing against you? But Jesus did not say a single word. And Pilate was greatly astonished. Now, it was the custom at the festival of Passover for the governor to release one prisoner of the people's choosing. That year, there was a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. And so Pilate, when all the people had assembled, said to them, Who do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For he knew that it was out of malice that they had handed Jesus over to Pilate. Oh, while Pilate was in court, he received a message from his wife. Have nothing to do with this innocent man, for I have been greatly troubled on his account because of dreams I had last night. But meanwhile, the chief priests and the elders persuaded the people to ask Pilate to free Barabbas and to demand that they have Jesus put to death. So when Pilate said to them, after they had assembled, whom do you want me to free for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? They shouted, Barabbas! Well, what should I do with Jesus then, Pilate said? Crucify him! Why? What has he done? But 
they began to shout out in one voice, Crucify him! Crucify him! And when Pilate saw that there was nothing he could do, and indeed that a riot was about to begin, he took water. And he washed his hands in clear view of the people. And he said, my hands are clean of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And he freed Barabbas for them. And he had Jesus flogged and led away to be crucified. <clears throat> the soldiers brought Jesus into Pilate's residence, the Praetorium, and when all the company had assembled, they stripped him and they dressed him in a scarlet robe. They plaited thorns to make a crown and they put it on his head. They put a stick in his right hand and then they mocked him. They knelt before him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat on him. And they took the stick from his hand and they beat him about the head. And when they were done mocking him, they took off the scarlet robe. They put his own clothes back on him. and they led him away to be crucified. <clears throat> On their way, they met a man from Cyrene. His name was Simon. And they pressed him into service to carry Jesus' cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They mixed wine with gall, and they gave it to Jesus to drink, but when he tasted it, he would not drink the rest. And then they crucified him. They cast lots and divided his clothes among them. And then they sat down to keep watch. Now the charges against Jesus were inscribed on the cross above him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And he was crucified between two bandits one on his right and one on his left. Passers-by stopped. They looked at Jesus and they wagged their heads. Ha! Well, ha, 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 this is the man who said that he would tear down the temple and rebuild it again in three days. Hey, come down from the cross. Come down and save yourselves. And the chief priests and the scribes and the elders mocked him also. They said, ha, he saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let him come down. Let him come down, king of Israel. Indeed, he trusted God well. God wants him, then let God rescue him. He said he was the son of God. And even the bandits who were crucified on either side of him taunted him in the same way. At midday, darkness fell over the land and it lasted until three o'clock. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you 
you forsaken me? And those in the crowd said, listen, he is calling out for Elijah. And somebody got some, a sponge and they soaked it in wine and they held it up to him to drink. But others said, wait, let us see if Elijah will come and save him. And then Jesus cried out once more. And he breathed his last. Well, the earth shook with an earthquake, rocks split, graves opened, and many of the saints of God came forth, and they appeared in the holy city after Jesus' resurrection, and many saw them. But the centurion and his men who had sat there keeping watch, they were filled with awe. <clears throat> And they said, truly, this man was God's son. Now the women were present too. They were watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and they had cared for him. There was Mary of Magdala, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. And when evening came, Joseph, a wealthy man from Arimathea, came and asked Pilate if he could have Jesus' body. And Pilate gave orders to give it to him. And so Joseph took Jesus' body. And he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. And he laid it in his own unused tomb that he had cut from the stone. And then he rolled a large stone in front of the opening. And he left. But Mary of Magdala and the other Mary remained. And they sat facing the tomb. <laughs> 